you will get to know in a few days. Uh, but I will leave it here that we understand that psychological mark in UK of 10K. So, uh, and I, I will not let the bean counters come in and tell me to make money on this one. I want people to ride this bike, right? Uh, so no, we will be there. We will be. Uh, if somebody considers motorcycles in this category, price will not be the reason will not be out. But you'll let them know in a few days, so I don't want to go more on that. So there is, of course, the COVID-related delays which have happened already, plus uh, our choice of appointing a distributor. Uh, we, we too, we've taken our time to appoint a distribution partner because we wanted to get a partner who was well aligned to the way we think and, and we wanted to be aligned to, to what their business goals were. So we've just sorted out distribution for the UK and uh, five, five, six countries in Europe as of now. Uh, UK is, uh, we're going with a company called Lucas Distribution, we're based out of Coventry and uh, Again, I can uh, tell you Luke Gregory, who's the managing director of, uh, of Lucas Distribution, uh, second, third generation entrepreneur. His dad started the two-wheeler uh, distribution business with them. Uh, they've also taken over a, a dealership named Lloyd Cooper, which is uh, one of the oldest motorcycle dealerships in, uh, in, the, in the UK. Uh, they've been BSA dealers since 1910. So what a wonderful way to go back into, uh, into selling bikes in the UK with a company which can trace its history back all those years. Uh, Europe is again something that we would announce over the next few days, uh, but uh, about five and six countries. So we'd start off with France, Italy, Spain, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. These are the, the five or six countries that, that we would start off with. Uh, we're almost ready to make that announcement as well. When will the bike go to Australia, New Zealand, America? So we're looking at all of that. So essentially, the, we're looking at North America, North and Central America, so Australia, so America, US, Canada, and Mexico together. Uh, that plus Australia, New Zealand, and, uh, and I, I typically call it Australasia because you'd add in uh, a Korea and a Japan there as well. Uh, all of these for next year. We're talking uh, with the government and the, the DIT, the, part, the Department for International Trade, uh, to identify suitable locations in and around the West Midlands sort of area. And uh, it'll effectively depend upon how do we see that thing expand for us. So uh, both of these models, we would actually want to make them here. That's, that's been our stated goal as well before. And, uh, but we'll have to see how it goes along because in the COVID period, we've already established uh, a manufacturing facility for the, the Gold Star in India. Uh, ideally, that should have been here. And uh, now that we've established it there, how much of that uh, is possible to move here because machining centers and stuff is not, not easy to, to, to move and set up again. Uh, so we'll take a call on that as we go along. For now, they're, they're manufactured out of India, but as soon as we have our facility discussions closed is where we would then, then start looking at, okay, how much do we manufacture there? How much do we manufacture here from a gold star perspective? Mm -hmm. Electric, of course, uh, is, is a different question altogether. That, that will be manufactured here. So uh, it's a two-year unlimited mileage warranty on them. Mm -hmm. What does it cover? It covers all the all the regular stuff that that you would need, uh, just like any other manufacturer's warranty. It would cover all of that. Uh, I think it's usage parts and consumables which which don't count on warranty. That's that's about it. Uh, but, but pretty standard. So we are starting off with about five to nine dealerships currently. Uh, that number expands very quickly to go, go a shade under 20 over the next month, month and a half. And I would say that this number would go and settle at about between 40 and 50. Uh, so if you were, if in parts of the UK, you'd be between 10 and 20 miles away from your closest dealership at best. Uh, there, there could be some parts up north where you would, you would probably be between 30 and 40 miles away from your ne nearest dealership. So the way I look at it, between 40 and 50 dealerships pretty much over the next few months. 
that's very close to my, that company is very close to my heart, so I'm not going to do one-to-one comparison. I keep on saying, uh, that's my first love, this is my forever love. So, right, uh, but... Uh, No, it won't be lacking on if you want to technicality in terms of torque. We are just as, uh, in terms of you know just general comparison. I, I, do, I, I don't think so. This bike has a one-to-one. Uh, why should it? it don't, uh, no, it doesn't. At least we've well, you know we are biased, right? But we genuinely believe this doesn't have a one-to-one comparison. But if you're in that market for that category, will it stand its ground and uh, beg for attention and uh, uh, a love and uh, Adulation, my answer is yes. And will it technically fit in in terms of power, torque, reliability, rideability, smile on your face? I think, yeah, all, the, all of them are tick marks. So we looked at the 500 as well. Uh, we, we started off with the promise that let's do a 500 single. But the power and torque outputs that we were looking at and the refinement that we wanted to do on the engine because a, a single is not a balanced engine, uh, it needs balancing. So the refinements that we wanted to conduct, all of that was turning out essentially power, uh, torque and refinement. Everything was working out much better at a 650. To be frank, with the kind of output that we were looking at and, and still meeting norms, uh, we wouldn't have got. We did explore, but we didn't explore with a physical model. We explored with a, a computer-based model. Right now, we have worked more on the more on the stock bike in terms of the rideability. Uh, yes, the sound. So you, there, are, there are ways in which you can uh, remove the DB killer and you can work on the sound yeah. uh, when you're going off-roading. Uh, so is that pretty easy to get out? Because we've put a lot of a few videos out, and one thing is that people really want, you know, that deep, goldy sound. Is it? We can like, stand and go to the bike, and I can do it for you right now. It's I'll, that I'll easy. Take a photo. Yeah. See, we're we're looking at bringing BSA back. Uh, Typically, not just in the form of a motorcycle, but we'll also add in uh, motorcycle accessories around it. Uh, the objective, what I would say is, get that real authentic BSA experience back in first. Uh, numbers, of course, will become important at a particular point of time. Uh, we, we are a, a, a serious business as well. Uh, but numbers is not something that we would chase. So we're talking of uh, other motorcycles on the same platform as well. Uh, so you could do do various other models on this uh, single cylinder engine platform. And that is what, what we would go for. And I could talk at length about that single cylinder and, uh, and, and why that, that single and how we've, we've made it into uh, what it is today. So there's, there's a whole range of stuff that, is, that we are doing. So we're looking at bike accessories and uh, motorcycle wear as well. Uh, so from a bike point of view, luggage systems. Uh, so you'd have your tank bags, you'd have side bags, you'd have a, a top bag as well. Uh, all of those with quick release systems on them. So very easy to fit in and, and take off uh, from the machine. Uh, standard crash bars, uh, lots and lots of stuff for, uh, uh, you would have engine sump protectors and, and things like that. You, we, you, we will also be doing machined uh, uh, bar ends. You'd be, be doing machined uh, uh, radiator caps. So all of, all of this uh, um, coming in pretty soon. From a motorcycle, uh, motorcyclist point of view, uh, jackets, jeans, boots, gloves, uh, heated grips, all of that coming in pretty quickly. And that'll all be BSA branded? Yes. So this is all, all our collaborations with uh, people. Uh, so the, the jackets are being done by Merlin for us. So it's, it's Merlin for BSA. It's all, it's all BSA branded uh, but, but made by Merlin. Uh, British brand again. Uh, uh, luggage is from, again, a European brand based out of uh, Belgium. Uh, there is crash bars and stuff that we, we are doing it ourselves. Uh, some of it, again, locally sourced uh, uh, from British manufacturing companies as well. So it's a, it's a 6,000 mile service interval. Mm -hmm. And uh, valves you just don't need to do. 
do anything. I think this it's it's 24,000 mile is where you would first need to touch them. Uh, Tappet adjustments is, is 12,000 miles, but that's that's just adjustment on there. It works brilliantly well. Uh, Have you got an off-road model coming out? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't comment on that. Not 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 just yet. For us, technically, they would all be the same, but there are uh, a few emission norms that could be different. Uh, for everywhere that accepts Euro 5, it would be just the same spec. Uh, the machines would also need to be adjusted for flex fuel. For example, some countries have uh, have higher ratio of, of uh, uh, ethanol mixed in them. So that would be that that would need to reflect in the way that the uh, the fuel map is tuned. Nobody can actually do that. Uh, primarily, it's it's uh, it's a legal thing. Not that uh, I can tell you just now, but uh, of course there would be be privateers who would who would want to take it racing. Yes. So you will you will keep on seeing a few as as significant dates come up, as significant events do come up. Uh, we are not huge fans of limited editions, but once in a while, yes. So we have we have a twin. Uh, the choice was to put that with this, but the way this turned out so beautifully that it just begged. This bike happened itself. It named itself. Uh, we were not. We had three names. We were, of course, we're making three bikes. Uh, we have a repository of names and three characters. I don't want to name them, but. Uh, uh, when this came together, when the single came together, when the bike came together, it begged itself to be called Goldie. So, yeah, uh, that's how it is. But you will see more bikes. As of now, there is enough leg room, there is enough uh, runway for this bike to be there for the next couple of years. I would like to. This is not a category where there is a model year and the next one and the next one and the next one. This is a forever bike, right? You will, hopefully, this will be uh, handed over to generations, right? That's how at least we love it. What I see BSA doing in uh, over the next few years, uh, we first want to consolidate in in uh, the home market, which is the UK, uh, and then in Europe, expand ourselves into the US, uh, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, all all of the uh, English-speaking countries, and then then also look at South America, for example. Uh, this is this is the way that we would we would spread ourselves. From a product portfolio point of view, uh, we would talk electric. We would also have, have a few other platforms that we would want to put out into the market. So all of that, basically, the first few years just to get BSA back and consolidate in there. I got so show off uh, more than 20, uh, all makes and models. So I'm not, I'm not biased, but loads of classic. Uh, my dad had an old M20, which I still am curating it. Tons of Enfields, uh, uh, Bonnie. So no, I'm not. Uh, I'm a bike. I just, I just love it. And of course, you know, we have Yawa, we have Yazdi, and we have BSA. Yeah. So between the three brands, now we have seven bikes, right? Three of each and one of this. Uh, so seven of them. Uh, I have all seven in various forms and colors. Of course, uh, some advantages to have a few custom mates, right? So they have just added to the last bit and some bigger bikes too. Uh, I've been told not to name all of them and uh, say that, but yeah. But I must say uh, my first big bike, which I still cherish it was, uh, was a Suzuki Bandit, right? So I have an old Bandit, uh, a 1200 old Bandit, which is, so there are some few of these loved ones. I don't think there's particularly any reason because it was my first big bike. Uh, I love that. I have, I, as I said, I have a, a few old bodies I love. Uh, of course, I have old BSAs, which were given, shipped from here. So now the collection is growing. My personal garage, I have, uh, <laughs> I have four or five of them. I have uh, a couple of Javas in there. I have, uh, I have one ESD. I have a couple of bigger bikes as well. What bigger bikes? Uh, I've had a BMW in the past, uh, a 1200 GS. Uh, my current big bike is, is not something that I would want to name just yet, 
but uh, yeah, yeah, I do ride, ride a few of them. <laughs>